Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Theos, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantacreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda et Jehova, El Emuna Jehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basileos, Basileon, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Numahagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos Kurion, Kurion, Kurion Hagion, Hagion, Hagion Gadol, Gadol, Geburah Yehova Ishmalkam, Yehova Shamma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Netzak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Isus Christos Pantacreta Numa Hagion Numa Otios Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Meshvat Shaba the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. <clears throat> in order to understand what is the will of God the Father, rather than being fools and wasting the grace of God, in search of vain glory and not understanding, we need to follow our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ for the good works what He has designed us before the foundation of the world rather than following him for the needs of your lusts of the flesh. Dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood. My confession of our sins through rebound. Let's come back and learn what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. Only to the praise of his glory in his grace, since nothing on this earth is more important for us than to perform the good pleasure of God the Father, what he has designed and kept for every man on this earth, so that his unfailing love upon every mankind to be saved, none to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. So dear brethren, 
using the privacy of our priesthood in this great and unique dispensation of the church age to confess our sins through rebound. Let's come back and learn the mind of Christ after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. In Father, I tell you, Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. In order to realize, O oh Father, you have called us to witness the word. And understanding that we shall not be the people wherewith we could leave behind a mark of blasphemy upon the word. But rather realize and understand your great, unique, high, holy, heavenly calling in the church age to be using your grace for your glory and nothing else on this earth. So, Father, as we're going to study these things which are prepared for us on today's date, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. In the book, what we read, particularly, Matthew gospel about the things pertaining to Judas Iscariot narration in comparison with Mark chapter 14 followed by 44 and 45 words with Matthew chapter 25 in Matthew chapter 26 it has to be we look the things which God the Father has recorded and kept for us in a way that we shall learn and understand the importance as a believer in Christ where exactly we are standing. And we look this word in Mark Gospel. He says in chapter 14 in verse 44 in 45 in 44 and he that betrayed him had given them a token saying whomsoever I shall kiss that same is he take him and lead him safely here dear brethren we look in verse number 45 as soon as he kissed he came, he goeth straight the way to, to the master and, and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. Here the word kissed is very, very important. It is called to be kata phileo. And here we have today to learn the three words for the word which God the Father calls us friend. In the Gospel of John chapter 14, when we have over here, <coughs> excuse me, in verse number 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And in chapter 15, again followed by verse number 14, you are my friends. Here he uses the word philos. The same thing over there in the great conversation between Lord and Savior Jesus Christ followed by Peter. We look, Simon, son of Jonas, love me. That means he's asking a question, do you agape love me? He said unto him, Lord, you know that I love thee. He's replying with philos love. So make the point over here because People without having to clearly understand the difference between these words, whether it is agape or philos, or we find again over here in this word in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 14 in verse number 44 in our context what we are studying. Here also he says, a kiss, I shall kiss, the word kiss is philos. So here we have to look. And over here in this comparison we find, now coming back to the 
Gospel of Matthew account in chapter 26 beginning with verse number 48 until to verse number 50. He says, Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, again the word token as we look, as a mark, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, here also we find the word philos, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, the word hail, over here what we look, is called Cairo, and to say, he's saying, Rejoice, Master, exceedingly you rejoice. And the word Master over here is called to be Rabbi, as we know the discussion, because Rabbi is what disciples would call to their Master. And kissed him. Here the word in the past, kataphilao. There he says, I kiss him. So he kisses him over here tenderly, followed by the word kata to the norms and standards. Again, philao, according to the demands of the word of God, as agape's demands of the word of God. And over there in John 15, 14, when we find Christ our Lord of God saying, you are my friends. Again, the word philos, that meant to say, the demand for me is 35 marks, but you say you have with me with you 70 marks. That means double the demands of what are the agape care or agape love needs. So philos love is stronger than agape. So he says, and kissed him, that is kataphilao, and Jesus said unto him, friend. Now of the word what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says over here, friend, is not exactly what we could look to be philos. But here the word is our old friend, what we are taken from Matthew chapter 22, verses 8 through 14, when he said in verse number 12, friend. The Greek word over there, what it has been used with the strong code number 2083, is the same over here, it is called hetairos. And the word hetairos is very, very important because... This is the word saying, my partner, comrade. This is the word which says, you are my fellow friend. And here when we find this word, hetairos, it is having a lot of meaning where many people are not able to realize and understand that this comrade or my friend, what he uses, is so such a beautiful one which God the Father has recorded and kept for us, saying that, this Hetairos is the one who shares with God equal privilege and equal opportunity. And what we are sharing as equal privilege and equal opportunity, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. So now, dear brethren, coming back to that Matthew chapter 22, which we have read about the invitation of the wedding of our Lord's Son, that is we, what we, the church is. Here he says, and in verse number 12, Matthew 22, 12, and he saith unto him, Friend, how came you in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Here the word friend is again what we look called to be hetairos. And hetairos we explained. It is as good as you are a partner. Now you shall come back and assemble and look upon these words. In John fifteen fourteen, Lord our God said, You are my friends, Philos. So he says in John 21 to Peter, Feed my flock if you love me. And the word feeding over there, the flock, is what today much of the priests or the pastor teachers in the past in Malachi 1 we look the priests despised the word of God. They left to dig in the word of God. That's what we find over there and account for us in Malachi 1. Because these words are very, very important, dear brethren. Anything that has been translated for you into the English, you are missing out a lot of the essence, wherewith you are not even able to bother and diligently search and look into that. Up to what extent God the Father has put into account these things. In Malachi 1.6, to read the word despise, it is called over here in the Hebrew, Baza. 
and baza in the pictographical representation it meant to say your body has left to dig and take or in simple terms as apostle paul says in second timothy 2:15 study to show thyself approved unto lord god diligently present yourself or spaudiza that day by day work of digging in the word of lord god word by word iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier to preach the word in depth that work they have left the work of digging the work of meditating the work of thoroughly being prepared in season and out of season that's the word bazaar despise because we find over here for us despise in the sense to hold in contempt or to regard with contempt or to make it to be vile and worthless but your brethren in the ancient pictographical representation of the word it says that despise is nothing but your body has left to dig and take every day the word of god and the pictographical representation being represented first by the body and second being represented by the matak the word matak over here is called as an agriculture implement or a weapon that is been used to dig or to make the fallow grounds to be broken up or fallow grounds to be broken up and give them the right word of lord god to be sold you know the same thing what we find over there for us when we look in the viewpoint of this ezekiel when he writes for us about this great word calling to be fallow grounds why and how they become fallow grounds because people today who don't understand what is the will of lord god but rather they are spending much of their time in such sort of this life that they have failed to look the right word of lord god to be number one priority so over here when we find for us in jeremiah chapter 4 he says for thus said the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground and sow not among the thorns this word is very very important because fallow grounds is what is happened today in our pulpits because men have failed to diligently dig and take the word of god therefore he says so not that means don't waste your time to put in the standards of this silly stupid details of life so he said in genesis 3:18 thorns and thistles it shall bring forth you shall heat the herb of the field in hosea 10 to 12 we see so to yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy break up your fallow ground once again over here for it is time to seek the lord till he come and rain righteousness upon in matthew 13:17 and some fell among the thorns and thorns sprung up and choked them you know a fertile land of the soil the same thing over there again in matthew 13:22 he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word of lord god and the cares of this life that is what anxiety marine must handles of this life what do they do they make them to forget about the word of god so the cares of this life and the things pertaining to this world the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become he unfruitful in mark 4 7 and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it up and it yielded no fruit again in mark 4 18 he says and these are they which are sown among thorns such are the word that they hear the same thing we find in the gospel of luke coming back over here in galatians 6 In verse seven and eight, he says, "Be not deceived; God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Because for he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption." The word corruption is called to be fatharo, that meant to say destruction. And but to he that soweth to the spirit, he shall reap ainonian zoo, that meant to say life eternal. so dear brethren the fallow grounds what they are all about the fallow grounds is what they have stopped to plow the hebrew word for it over here is called as niir n i y r so it is untilled 
and when it has been untilled, you know the way how the agricultural land will not be worth enough to sow. So untilled land, he says that in the pictographical representation, there will be no beginning of the seed. So, here we look upon that parable, the first parable, what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches to them, and he explains to them, saying that, Are you so dull that you can't understand this parable? And he goes on to say, The fertile soil, where it has been well placed, not on the wayside, not on the rocky soil, not on the thorns and thistles, because Satan will come and catch away the word of God. So, what does he say? On the fertile soil, the fourth part, and today also, the fertile soil refers back to that breaking up of fallow grounds and sowing the seed of the word of the Lord. So here, dear brethren, coming back to this word, what we are looking in this great word of Matthew, what we are taking into consideration, or here in the viewpoint of Baza, Malachi 1.6, because they have despised. So here, it meant to say, this people, they have failed to break up the fallow ground. That's what he says in Malachi. Baza, they have failed to take in or take in the implements, the agriculture uh, implements or the tools or the weapons which have been much needed for us today. So what they have done? They have failed to dig. They have failed to make the fourth part of the ground which has to be fertile enough. And they have completely ruined out the churches, what we are able to look today in our pulpits. Today we don't find much of the thing which the word of Lord God teaches to us in our pulpits. Therefore, what is happening, dear brethren? Many hetairos have come out. Comrades who have been the partners with the word of Lord God, because we share, kaimon, we share commonly kainonian all things together with Christ. We share with him equal privilege. We share with him equal opportunity. We share with him his righteousness, his life eternal. But at the end, we are turning out to be Judas Iscariot. You know, dear brother, and Judas was also one among the disciples appointed earlier by the Lord. And people are not able to realize there are many Judas today, Judas Iscariot today in our pulpits, in our midst, in our Christendom. <laughs> and men think, living a life like Judas Iscariot, we can easily be saved. But here Lord God says, No, accept the son of perdition. And what does he do? He comes in the way, saying that he is cataphilos. The word philos meant to say, wherewith he says, Lord, that demands what you are claiming now in John 21 through Simon Peter, as the way how he said after the resurrection of the Lord, looking unto his great power, Lord, I love thee, I love thee, he says twice. Then he says, Bosco, again poiman, again Bosco, feed, tent, feed. And the third time, my Lord, my rock, clearly asks him, Do you really, Philos, love me? He says, Lord, you know all the things. You know, we have a lot many lessons to learn in this life. God the Father is asking you in very simple terms, You are my friends, Philos. We are coming in one branch or one uh, under one head for one root of tree that we all are belonging to Christ and God the Father in his grace he has provided us such a kind of a great privilege on this earth to be his, his men on this earth in very simple terms he teaches to us you philos love me and if you love me the word philos he says you are my friends and whatsoever I have commanded you are going to do it but now we, like Zudas is yet exploring the colors of our, to use the word, like that, lizard, chameleon, which changes its colors. We have come to Christ in the sense to say that we are really believing in the Lord, but in reality, you are not really believing in Christ. If you were really believing in Christ, you wouldn't have said, to whomsoever I kiss, I say that I live like a philos love to the Lord. But in written, when God the Father has used this disciple to be over here as an illustration for us, that many Christians in the present Christendom are exactly the pattern like 
Judas Iscariot, saying that, Lord, we love thee. We die for thee. We do everything according to your grace. And you know what Christ, our Lord, our God, would call such people? He doesn't call philos. He says, friend, hetairos. You have shared with me everything. You enjoyed the grace of Lord God with me. But you did not make up your time to break up your fallow grounds and look that your life, if you don't reach confirming to the image of my Christ, if you don't renovate the standards of your thinking according to the demands of the word of the Lord my God, you will not have your resurrection body. Do you think Judas is saved? Accept the son of perdition. I lost none, he said whom you have given, because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. And in the scriptures, as we, as we are looking, some to eternal life and some to eternal condemnation and contempt. So we have to be very careful with the life which God the Father has given unto us. It is not the sweetness of morality or sweetness of personality that we preach. It is what the word of Lord God which demands and which demands in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic to go in detail and dig and tell in the each and every ancient pictographical representation of the word of God because if you are not doing that, you are despising my Lord in the Hebrew called Bazaar and the words what we find for pictographs over there your body you are not allowing it to use the weapons of warfare or the implement weapons to day by day dig and take the reality of the mind of Christ you know why Christ our Lord of God said day by day carry your cross and follow me then only are worthy of me it's hard for many because many people will think they can walk in the straight gate the narrow gate but he says many would love to do so but they cannot in Luke chapter 13 because the road which goes to the things pertaining to God is a narrow road. Therefore, it meant to say day by day, break up your fallow grounds, become the fourth part of the soil. When God the Father would sow in, you would get proper fruit growing up from 30 to 60, from 60 to 100. You know, we should be absolutely ashamed when an unbelievers are claiming that Bible is devilish. Who can say, you drink and you forget all the worries. You know, the people, when they don't understand the context of this simple truth, what we are finding in the Hebrew or in the Greek, they quite obviously think Bible is devilish. That's what Sheikh Ahmad Didad in one of his tape he puts. To the blind, all things are blind. You know, these people, they can't understand what is the exact content of the spiritual phenomena, if we, the church age believers, at the present time, what we're going through in this 21st century, if we fail to exegete each and every word and tell them the difference between philos and hetairos, when he said, I will kiss, I will show him the philos love, or cataphilao, I will act like if that I have been greater in love with him to obey his commandments, that's what we are acting today. We are acting like cataphilao to the Lord. But Lord God knows what we are very well. So he calls you Hetairos. He doesn't call Philos. As he said in John fifteen fourteen, he did not call you to be Philos. He says Hetairos. And who is the same Hetairos? In Matthew 22, 12, we find Hetairos. He comes to the wedding, but no wedding garments. So when God the Father asks him, Hetairos, how did you come over here without wedding garments? And then you would be thinking you can be saved because you entered into wedding garments. He says, tie up his hands and legs, his hands first, because he did not become to be the grammatias grown up by writing the word of God. And second, where you have to put him into the lake of fire because he did not use his legs to go and spread the gospel of the mind of Christ. You know, today we require in our pulpits a reformation like Jehoshaphat, the way how he did the great reformation, how much he has done for us. When we look upon that example of Second Chronicles, chapter 17, verses 7 through 10, he chose those principal men, he chose those Levites, he took those priests, and he gave them the law of the word of the Lord of a God, and he sent them village by village, by walk. And what for he sent? To teach the word of God. Today the church has forgot the basic principle why they have been kept alive in the Lord. The purpose of the church. 
when the word of Lord God has been richly taught, then the disciples will multiply. When there are disciples multiplied in accord with the word of God, there will be peace because love rejoices in truth. When there is love, there will be joy, followed by the fruit of the Spirit with peace. When there is no truth, you will find divisions. You will find in your churches not able to walk to the demands of the word of God and people think that what they're doing is good and correct and accurate. But in return, we will find that these men are not at all worthy. These are heteros, but in reality they prove or act as if they are philos to Christ. Therefore, who is the failure? The failure is the pastor teacher. He has failed to dig and put in you the right word of God. Such is your life today. Just go back and look where there is no proper revolution of the word of Lord God, where there is no proper teaching of the word of Lord God, there will be no fear. Men will not fear the word of God. When the men are not fearing the right word of God and the purpose of God, they quite obviously seek solutions which would give them in the standards of making having to be comfortable like this money what Zudas Iskaret has done in exchanging having making them to be to have an enjoy of a life depending upon that money depending upon that circumstances depending upon that comfort zones to use the word and how do they use that comfort zones because they have their own defense mechanisms to prove so they are happy in such a way. Why you shall not teach the word of Lord God every day? Why God the Father has called you to take in every day the word of God? They would say, according to their comfort zones, their defense mechanism answers. They don't want to become like a Oshafat reformation. They don't want to break up the fallow grounds. They are making every believer to kiss my Lord saying that we really show forth the philos love unto you. <laughs> but God the Father knows very well what is you. So he gives over there for us the word in the standards, Hatairos. And the word Hatairos meant to say, you have shared with me as equal privilege, equal opportunity, as a partner, as a comrade. You have to put up on your wedding garments day by day. You have to go back onto the work of the Lord. Day by day, you have to do the will of the Lord. Day by day, you have to consider the mind of Christ to be number one. Day by day, you have to do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. That's what I have called you. That's what I have designed you. That's what I have made you up. But what have you done? You have been like the people called to be Hatairos. You may be thinking that you are pure, good and correct and clear, but God the Father knows very well what to call you. So when God the Father has included the twelfth one to be like Zudas Iscariot, then in the church age we are able to find many Zudas Iscariot in our pulpits. In fact, indeed, in the present Christendom, who have failed to take in the work of the Lord and the glory of the Lord and the burden of the Lord according to the will of God the Father, we find in very simple terms that these men are no way far better than Zudas Iscariot. Because the priests, he claims in Malachi 1.6, what they have done? They have failed to be the right word of God. They have bazaar with my Christ. The same thing today we are going to look in our pulpits. There is no proper inculcation of the word of the Lord. There is no proper teaching of the mind of Christ. Therefore, in Malachi 1.6, when we look into this word bazaar, it meant to say, the house has been attacked. But do you know what is the real purpose of the church? Coming back to Proverbs 31, where we are looking upon the discourse about the work of church. In verse number 27, as we are going to look, the word of Lord God says, in verse number 28, Her children arise and call her blessed. The children are we, the church age, when the proper word of Lord God has been inculcated by the pastor teacher in the pulpits, the children will, will arise and call blessed. And the word blessed or the children are nothing but those who are having the vigor and valor of the word of God. The word arise from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. They have in their blood 
to stand and to talk about the word of God. So these are the men as the youth who have overcome the wicked ones, as he writes in 1 John 2, because they have been from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, the word of Lord God to these perishing souls. So her children arise and call her blessed. Again, the word blessed is called to be Yasher. That meant to say, having a right and true umbilical cord kind of relationship with God the Father. So what is this umbilical cord? The munching process of her, they have only one thing in common, and that is called to be all the days of this life, to renovate the standards of the thinking. So it is such kind of a umbilical cord of relationship, her children call her a blessed. That's what the church is constantly given to look upon the feeding of the word of God by the right pastor teacher. If the pastor teacher fails to feed you in accord with the right word of Lord God, we cannot call the church to be blessed. That's the constant duty of the work of the wife of the Lord. Constantly being fed, constantly it has been called blessed, yasher, because it has such kind of a right and true umbilical cord relationship with Lord, not like the relationship of Zudas Iscariot, who shows forth like a chameleon something outside, but he munches something inside. And furthermore, we look, he says, her husband, that is the possessor of her, called to be Baal in the Hebrew. You know who is that Baal or the master or the one who goes on to bind to the servant the yoke? You know, right helpmate, what we look in Genesis. So he says, the master or the Baal is the one who has on that body the viewpoint of her husband. And in that viewpoint of a husband, she has to carry like a disciple the yoke of her Lord. That's what we find the word Baal. Baal meant to say possessor. Baal meant to say many things over here what we look as a husband or a owner or the details of the law, of the details of this word. As he says over there, one of the uh, in one of the prophets of Hosea 2, he says that you shall no longer remember Baal, but you shall call Jehovah Elohim. That meant to say what? Your body, your viewpoint of your eye, and you will be if the disciples of the word of God, and I use the word if disciples, because you are slaves to your thinking. If your thinking is divine viewpoint, then you are slaves to Jehovah Elohim. If your thinking is human viewpoint, you are slaves to this world. So Sowing to the world and to the flesh, you will reap death. Sowing to the spirit, you will reap life eternal. So God is not mocked what you sow that you will reap. So in very simple terms, he teaches that you shall no longer call me Baal, but you shall be calling me as Jehovah, the only one that exists. The only one is the word of God, being blind and deaf to the world. We carry to conform to the image of Christ because we want to have a part in our first resurrection and we shall no longer be entitled to be in the second death. And that's what every believer has been called to get qualified. But Zudas is Kuryat, kind of many are lot in our pulpits. You have to wake up, dear brethren. It is not just any sweet sugar-coated preachings for you or to say that, don't worry, you will be having this, you will be having that. No, dear brethren, if the Bible says such and such men to whom God the Father has given this great glorious work to enter into the garments, into the wedding, but not having the garments, he calls heteros, you comrades, whom I have chosen you, whom you ought to be the word of God, whom you ought to be the mind of Christ, you had Tyros. He did he allow him to come? No. The same thing over here uses to Zudas Iscariot, had Tyros, friend. You are going to cheat me. Today we have to cross check our hearts. Whether we are still had Tyros. And a husband, he says over here in Proverbs 31, master, the one who has rule over a body, the one who has to think according to the thinking of Christ, because ultimately God the Father was the head of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for every man, Anthropas, head is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for every human, the head is her own husband. So if the head for man is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then the same thinking would pass down to his wife. So she can have the same head. She can be in the same process. So the ruler is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The husband or the master or the Lord is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
So here, dear brethren, we find saying that her husband or Baal, her possessor, praiseth her. The word is very important, dear brethren. The word what we find over here for praise is called to be halal. That meant to say they shine forth. And how do they shine forth? The word is very important because the shining process is nothing but we look toward something which is shining. In the midst of our Lord's birth, we look, the Magis were directed by the star which was shining. And as we look over there in Daniel, again he writes, you will be like stars in the heaven, as we have been led many. And there also we read in context over there, as disciples grown up into grammatias, as disciples taking this great burden of the Lord of our God in going and making disciples of all the nations, they will be like stars shining up. And again, these stars, as we look in the midst of a dark place, these stars are the shining process. When it has been there, it will be like a ray of hope. And people would consider in the midst of such darkness, a light has been there. So they go to get themselves saved to such light. Therefore, Christ our Lord our God said, in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations, where it is complete darkness without the word of God, and when he gave first through the wovering of Lord God the Holy Ghost, and then through the process of this great Lord's birth on this earth, the incarnation, again going on for crucifixion, and then resurrection of our Lord, he gives that light to everyone, and he says, now you are the light and salt of the earth. So the husband is the one, when he looks in each and every believer, the image of Christ confirmed, they will be like the stars shining in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. So here when we find the word shining halal, it is what they are looking towards something. And the world is constantly looking towards us, whether we shall shine like the Lord's luminaries or not. If you shine out of the midst of this darkness and let them know what is the true life, what is the true peace, what is the true character of Christ in you, people will come and look upon your life and they will believe in Christ. That's what he said. They look upon your works and they glorify God the Father. But the problem with us is the husband is not in a position to shine you or to praise you. Because you, the church, the wife, are eating the bread of idleness. But you are not truly eating the glory of God to be shined forth. Because that's what we find out here in the previous verse. She looketh well to the ways of her household. You know, the word is very important. The word looketh well is called to be sapa. And the word sapa, or tea being silent, it meant to say, as a watchtower, no matter whatever may be the pressure of life, you open up your mouth according to the word of God. So sapa. So what does she do? She looketh well. The ways, the ways are very, very important. Halak, halak, it has been used twice. But what we find over here in the English, well, to the ways of her household. It says only once, ways, but in the Hebrew it's strong, it's emphatic, it says twice, halak, halak. And you know what is that thorough check or double check? She wants to cross check every disciple is grown up into grammatias or not. That's the first time we find halak, 1979 code, followed by the second time again halak. That meant to say she is doubly cross-checking each and every time whether they are in a position of making disciples or they have grown up in a place to be called to be like disciples in the Lord. Halak, halak. It is not just the word what we look ways. And the word over here, halak, meant to say it is a nomad who has traveled on foot with a staff in his hand, that is what the Lama stick in his hand, to support as a weapon to defend against predators or thieves. So here, Halak is nothing but the one who walks for another. The church is walking for Christ in making disciples of all the nations. The wife, in fact, indeed, if you could look in your day-to-day -day life, she is prepared for you to be a right helpmate. In the same procedure over here we look, halak. 
as a disciples have grown up into grammatiers or not. That's what she look at well. That's said. No matter whatever may be the pressure, every believer, as we look upon in the book of Ephesians or in First Peter or whatever the things which have been exhorted in the word of God, he says, open up your mouth as divine oracles, seasoned with salt, because the time that has been given for you, looking upon you, have to be communicators of Bible doctrine. So the word tasaf, what we look, or safa, what we look, is very, very important. Under any pressure or the day of life on this earth which have been given, you have to open up your mouth in a region that you have grown up into grammar tears. If you have not grown up into grammar tears, check whether you are still disciples or if you are still out of the root of discipleship technon program. So check, encourage, check, encourage. That's the details of life when you open up your mouth. Check and encourage. And nothing else than that. Check and encourage. If you're not a disciple, teach them that you have to be a disciple. Don't be like a Zudas Iscariot saying that Katafila, oh, I will be the friend of the Lord and at the end he will be called as a Tyros. Check your fallow grounds, break it up. If you're not breaking up your fallow grounds, you will be produced thorns and thistles as you can look into a barren field. The things which have no value, the thorns and thistles, they easily grow up, but the fruit which has to be there, you have to take a proper care of it. That's what people don't understand. Thorns and thistles are the thoughts which are like the seeds which have no purpose and origin from God. So without breaking the th without even breaking the fallow grounds, they can easily grow up. But in order to produce the right word of God or the right will of God or the right fruit of God, your fallow grounds have to be broken up. They have to be tilted. They have to be thoroughly manured. And every time constant care has to be taken. Because inch by inch when we walk and look for each and every plant over there, you will find again the creeping of the stones and thistles or grass coming up. So what you do, you employ the labors and you clean them so that the, the, the mature field or the fertile field shall not be inculcated with wrong thoughts or wrong viewpoints of men. But with proper care, you are going to get into the right work of the Lord. And what you do, no matter whatever it is, you take a proper care of that. So there will be men all the time. Therefore, we find for us, get every thought into captivity for Christ. Cross-check whether these things are in the word of Lord God. Cross-check what do they mean in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Simply do not believe every wind of doctrine that cometh by. Look, diligently search. Because Satan, like a roaring lion, wants to feed in your fertile soil the tares rather than giving you proper food of wheat. And today we are not able to find men who could feed you with great wheat of the word of God. And that's what we read yesterday among the standards of Zacchaeus when he went along to say, into that psychomere tree. It is Sukhan in the Greek. It meant to say, ripe and mature in the word of God to feed the right thing. If you haven't been found to be right and mature in the word of Lord God, you're going to lose many things on this earth. So right and mature things. The standards of the Lord's will, the standards of the Lord's call, right and mature. It is not just few things wherewith you can think it could be good or great or perfect, but it says, right and mature, he went along Empress Ten and Traco into the standards of a psychomotor tree, which is Sukhan, and the word Sukhan went to say, which is ripe. And today there aren't enough ministers who have been trained well enough in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. But they think they rely upon the translations. The translations can lead them, but it will lead them into hell. It will lead them to make you to become like a Zudas Iscariot. It will lead them to call to be like a Katafilao, but in return they are, kat, they are Hatiros in the sight of the Lord. It will lead that fertile land of soil to be filled up with thorns because you don't take proper care, diligent care, to be in the presence of God the Father, moment by moment examination in the sight of the Lord, as we read that in Zaphnia 3, 5, Job 7, 17 and 18, because it is day by day the Lord God gathered into our notice to understand the judge 
judgments of Christ. It's moment by moment he examines us. Therefore, we have to be very careful that though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. And every day we have to be careful. Are there any thoughts, anything wherewith when we are opening up our mouth, do they match against the word of God? Or are we encouraging them to become the disciples grown up into grammatias? You know, you don't have any other business to open up your mouth to talk. She looketh well into her ways. The word looketh, Safa, meant to say, no matter whatever may be the pressure, she always opened her mouth to make you to understand that you have to be a disciple born in John 1 to 12. And as a disciple being born, your work is to grow up into grammatias. This is the work with the church age because John 1 to 12 is so clear and authentic, which says for us, the one who have been born. He gave the power to become the sons of God. They have been born not by the will of blood, nor by the will of man, nor by the will of flesh. They have been born by the will of God the Father. And where you are born, where you are given the authority, exist the authority to become the sons of God. What it is? Tekna. You are born as a disciple in Christ in the church age. And disciples being trained as we calculated for you for more than one year when they thought they were taught by Paul and Barnabas in that place of Antioch. We look minimum 10 hours a day. That is the style of the preaching, not this weekly one hour or the daily one hour business as we look in our silly stupid talks. It is not just weekly one hour, day by day, 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 word by word. So they thought minimum 8 to 10 hours a day. And they were eager enough to know their eternal life because they loved eternal life rather than the details of this life on this earth. And today people are happy to love <laughs> everything but the word of God. You know, Zulat is career for the sake of money he exchanged. The glory of Lord God to a lie. Today many men are exchanged. The true value of life for the sake of silly stupid details of this earth. The thing that you have done to Lord God that alone will stand here, brethren. The other things what you are doing is for you and for your family and for your life to be surviving on this earth. You are trying to protect your life against the will of God, wherewith your life has been given to do the will of God, and not to protect your life or take care of your life in what you eat, what you drink, like the pagans, or what you provide for yourselves. Your body is not your own, says the word of Lord God. You have been bought up with a great price. You don't have any authority upon your own body, says the word. Your body is completely belonging to Christ. We need to glorify Lord God in this body through the spirit of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, indwelling in us to the praise of his glory. So when our body is not our own, then how much more we think we can work out our life to the standards of the silly stupid body on this earth. All things is what God the Father provides. You know what they're doing? Instead of doing the work of the Lord, instead of opening your mouth to make them disciples, instead of doing the glorious work of Christ, you're using your tongue. You know, the tongue doesn't have bone. <laughs> your tongues are like great poisonous snakes, venom. You're using your tongues, the tongue which cannot be tamed as we look in James 3. The hard, difficult one which can never be tamed is the tongue. It can tame anything, but not the tongue, because tongue is the world of evil. <laughs> but we have to become the tongue of the learned, as Isaiah chapter 50 says about my Christ, verses 4 through 7. He became the tongue of the learned in order to become the tongue of the learned. It has to become, day by day, to be obedient to learn the word of God, but you're not doing that. Coming back to the book of Psalms, he says, Lord, that my tongue is the pen of a rediscriber. How? When all the bones of mine are gathered together to praise the work of the Lord on this earth, ultimately my tongue, by daily intake of the word of Lord God, will become the tongue of the learned, the pen of a rediscriber. Rediscriber. But the rest of the life, what you're living, we cannot even call you Christians, dear brethren. You think you're really qualified Christians? No. 
You're having just that like a name, Zudos Iscariot Christians you are. You're not Philos, but you're Katairos. Hatairos, not Katairos, Hatairos. If you're really disciple Christians, you would follow the pattern of daily taking your cross, learning the word of God, paying the tithe of your time towards my Christ, and in return, whenever you open up your mouth, as this woman, she's well looking now to the ways of a household. And the word ways are nothing but making them disciples grown up into grammatiers. And now this woman, she is completely taking care to be very careful to open up her mouth. You know, every word of Argathas, which has not been producing the character of Christ, the word of Lord God writes for us, you are considered to give an account for that. And how many words we talk today which are worthless, which are not edifying in others, the glory and the grace of God to shine forth. How many words we are talking? Just consider your life, how worthless you are talking. Tomorrow you have to pay back for every word what you spoke. So when we find the word, she looketh well. When she's looking well, she's very careful. In the day of the time, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, to open up her mouth, to open up her mouth very carefully, to make each and every believer whom she is in touch, to look into the ways of the Lord. Then her children will call her blessed. That the church is having a right and true fellowship with Lord God. It is not having a hypocritical fellowship like Zudas is Kuryat, who could betray my Lord with a kiss. The children are those people not being as ample as we could look. When Abraham was being promised, you shall find stars, as many stars in the heaven. You will have your genealogy in such a way. But how it begin? It begins with one man, Isaac, the promised seed. And then we find with Isaac, Jacob, again, the twelve tribes. Again, we find the number for the twelve tribes in one like 44,000 of the book of Revolution. So how did he begin? He began with one. He, as he showed, he did not find to prove that there are so many stars for him, children born. Though it is possible by the Lord to do so. Because you know very well now the anatomy of the physical body. At one ejaculation, you will find minimum three to five million sperms in that. Just imagine one sperm fertilizing one egg. At one ejaculation, you would get minimum three million children or five million children. <laughs> and that's what people don't understand this. God could do that. But why did he give only one? The promised seed, that too. Because he promised Abraham such a way it would be, such a way the things would be. And he said, you're going to find such sort of a stars, such sort of a sand particles which are far greater than that. And we're able to look that now in the church age, as many people are called, few are chosen. So when she opened up her mouth, she's very carefully looking upon every thought everything that goes by. And she's considering that, how well she has to be using her mouth. So, when she's been using her mouth, every Argatha's word, she's very, very careful. Every day you get in your account, 24 hours being credited. How many words that are not making others to become disciples? <coughs> In order to make them disciples, first you have to grow up into grammatiers. How many words? So you have to be very careful whether you're walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, or you're out of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Or you're like Judas Iscariot, using the time of your life in the silly, stupid things. You have to be very, very careful about this thing. Just don't think the life is so simple and easy. We can enjoy the details of life and we can forget. No, dear brethren. The things what we have for us in the church age are being accounted. He says, before the foundation of the world, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless for the work of before the foundation of the world for good works, what I have chosen you, 
by the church wherein now the manifold wisdom of Lord God has to be taught through the pastor teachers, he says in Ephesians 4, so that they could edify you to the perfection of knowledge of Christ by being all the time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost, Ephesians 5, because you shall not be drunken or into the world details, but rather you will be under the controlling mentoring ministry, understanding the will of God, awaking from your sleep wherewith you sleep, and looking upon to where the entire entire panoply of Lord's will of His glory in the standards of fighting with the only offensive weapon, the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher, and that only offensive weapon is day by day teaching of the word of Lord God to the churches so that your fallow grounds could be broken up and you could sow to the Spirit and reap eternal life. But you don't understand you have been put before the foundation of the world. Your every word is accounted before the Lord. We cannot do still the same childish things. When we look into the life of Moses, the first 40 years, what he was, when he reached that age of maturity, he did not do the same thing to go back and sit in the Pharaoh's throne. Suffering for Christ, doing the will of Christ is far greater important, he considered. And he did that which was the demand of the word. And he let go the details of life. The same thing with Apostle Paul. Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot rejected the call of grace. Apostle Paul accepted the last call of grace. And he knew now. When he considers in his dream, in, in his vision of Damascus, on the way to Damascus, Lord, he calls, Kurion. He says to him, that when he was blind to the world for three days, he was permanently blind to the law or to the things pertaining to the way away from grace. And he shows forth now the path of truth upon truth. Though we have been saved by faith alone in Christ alone, that is for true believers who love to take up the cross day by day. They come to church to learn the eternal life. Not for gimmicks, not for the sake of money, not for your accountants of your attendance in the church. You come there to know your eternal life. After you die, dear brethren, you will not have your resurrection body. If you have not conformed to the image of Christ, that's what we find the Greek word, summafe, followed by Philippians 3, in verse number 10 and 11, the same thing over here in Romans chapter 8, in verse number 29, conforming to the image of Christ. If you fail, he says, summafe has not been given for you in Philippians 3. And over here, when we look upon the good deeds, the best deeds, what all you have done, they will not come into consideration in the sight of the Lord. What have you done for Christ? The one talent one he digged and kept, you are losing your talent in such way that you are not even able to realize that you are at the danger of your second death. And people are so happy not even to consider that second death to be the serious call. And for many other things, they are so happy in this life. They are so cautious to take the two doses of vaccine. They are cautious to take up the booster dose. They are so alert to save their life. What for you are going to save your life? To go and grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist Lord God, the Holy Ghost still. You know, when you fail to take up your cross every day in such a Sukhan church, a church where there is right mature word of God and come and learn there the word of God, no matter however life on this earth, if you may live 120 years or if you may go on to live 220 years, it doesn't count anything for you as a worth. The greater you come and take and gather up your word of God day by day being taught in the pulpits, that's the real worth of your life. Whatsoever you do on this earth will vanish off. Your history pages of records, in your Guinness book or in your Limca book of records, whatever they are. Wherever names may be entered to say that I have won a gold medal in the Olympics, so what? You have run a race in such a way in the Hismas game, so you have been crowned with wreath of glory, so what? Are you a partaking of the resurrection body of Christ? That's what it makes the difference. Stupids like Tom, Dick and Harry, Sheikh Ahmadid or any other person are now this many channels which they are put in the YouTube. They may claim Bible is devilish. You know what? Why they call the devilish? Because they don't want eternal heaven. Though they may ask, grant him 
He may be a great leader. He may be this. He may be that. We know very well. Without Christ, they will burn in the lake of fire. The, the word of Lord God, what we call Jehovah, he himself is a revolution. It is what he is going to teach us. And you claim that book of revolution, as many critics were in the past for the book of Daniel, for this book, for that book. We find the word of Lord God standeth and abideth for sure because Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mentioned them. He used the name Daniel. He used the name Jeremiah. He used the name, the things pertaining to Ezekiel and Isaiah. Those things what have been recorded and kept for us. He used that meant to say they are authenticated. They are true. They are real. And when Solomon is writing in the book of Proverbs, drink wine and forget the poverty, people don't understand the importance of that. He's saying for them, King, do not be a drunkard one. You are being in the realm of responsibility and the Bible says drunkardness is not. But be in your realm, that which could cherish you. And forget your sorry, you forget your worries. And people will think that's a devilish advice. Then when God has advised you to marry only one, you people marry four, then what do you call that? Is that godly advice? Dear brethren, don't try to talk about the Bible. It is recording the faults of men, the incest of Lot. Moabites and the Ammonites, it's recording the faults of men. And do you think today in this world there aren't enough incest relationships? It has been recorded there so that man can know the value of this life and understand to be far from such way of lives. Those things earlier, what they were recorded, he's giving a Levitical code, he's giving again in the book of Exodus to correct. But this man don't read so further because they don't have the correlation of the synchronization of this word. And they call Bible to be devilish. Dear brethren, this man minds are devilish. You know why? They will be in the eternal lake of fire. Satan doesn't want you to know the truth. And how many people they're following this Tom, Dick and Harris, the present comparative religion men, Zakir Naik or many other one who would come even in the future. The past Sheikh Ahmadidad. They have their place in the lake of fire for sure. Because they will never conform to the image of Christ. They will never have in them the thinking of Christ in making disciples of all the nations. And making disciples of all the nations is teaching each and every believer to consider that you have to conform to the image of Christ. And if you have not conformed to the image of Christ, for sure you will not be having your resurrection body. And you may think a little sleep, a little slumber, a little slumber is enough. But the word of Lord God is very clear and very specific, dear brother. The unbelievers are pointing out your moralities. Prove them your virtue. In order to reply to your failures, massive success is needed. Get back to walk according to the thinking of Christ. Get back to make and perform according to the will of God the Father. Show them when you're walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost what a great life you're living on this earth. Teach them when we are constantly under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. Love, joy, peace, what we have. Prove them. Prove them the honesty. Prove them the integrity. Prove them the virtue values. But today the Christendom has been filled with Judas Iscariot men. Outward, they would say, Catafila, oh, Sunday once in the church. The remaining six or seven days, when you look, <laughs> you'll find them, Hatiras, Lord, to ask the question. With a kiss, you have betrayed me, my friend. In Sunday churches, you are happy to say you are really pure and good and correct. And in the weeknights of Saturday or Friday, they make to look upon half-naked women in the clubs and dance with them. And they prove that they're really Christians. Why will not an unbeliever like Sheikh Ahmad Didat will point out your faults? And the reason why you have been pointing out that faults is because you haven't broken up your fallow grounds. And the reason why your fallow grounds haven't been broken up because you don't have proper mind to inculcate in the right word of God. 
the man who could teach you day by day in the mind of Christ, the man who could give you Sukhan kind of church. And in return, you're spending your time thinking that what you have learned is great, what you have made is great, what you're thinking is great, but in return, in reality, you find you're absolutely sure right. Your thinking is not great. Your mind is not great. Because the longer you fail to make them disciples in the word of God, the greater your life is absolutely way. So now we look in Proverbs 31 in verse 28. She says, she looketh into the ways. Opening her mouth in the divine wisdom of the word of the Lord. We look upon the standards of you, even the pastors, or with the flattering titles in the present Christendom. Just look into the word of God. Because of you, the name of my Christ has been blasphemed among unbelievers. We are not here to give you any mannerism of the thing that which could appease your appetite. Look your seriousness. After you die, you're not going to get your resurrection body. Then you'll be into heaven forever into the eternal lake of fire. Everlasting shame, everlasting contempt. You will be found there without wedding garments. You will be found naked. He calls you Hatiros. So how do you get into confirmation of the image of Christ? Day by day, learn the word of God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Day by day to go to such kind of a Sukhan church where God the Father, when he trained them for more than one year with Paul and Barnabas, those disciples being trained minimum 3,650 hours. Consistently, those disciples were called as first-time Christians, but we don't find you to be calling you as Christians any longer. That's why, because of you, the name of my Christ has been blasphemed. As we look in the time of Malachi chapter 1, they despise the word of God. And as they despise the word of Lord God, as they despise the work of Lord God, what do they find? He writes over here in Malachi with a great pain to understand. How much of a failure this man they have given or made up to Christ. Malachi chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1 itself, if you would look. The burden, this is called to be the word as Masa. It is not the vision. It is called in the standards of Masa. And what is the word Masa? As we have been told you, that from the fifth or tenth floor of a height of a building, if there is 10 or 20 tons of weight which falls upon a man, and the man will be completely splashed to the ground. Such is the burden called to be Masa. So he says over here, the mass of the word of the Lord of God to Israel by Malachi. Malachi meant to say, my messengers, I have loved you, said the Lord God, yet you have, wherein you have loved us. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. You know, no matter however you may try to think you can live a life for your own self and not for the word of Christ, it will be like the life of Esau, wherewith he says, Heritage of his mountains were been laid waste for dragons and for the wilderness. Whatsoever you do, where you're going to get it up, it will be for dragons and for the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, We have impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the border hath indignation forever. You know, the false pastor teachers who come to build up your life without giving to you the real cause or the real work of the Lord. So you try to build up, he says, like, I'm going to fall it down. And your eyes shall see, and you shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. And coming back over here to it, verse number 6, A son honoreth his father, and a servant is master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? And if I then be a master, where is my fear? You know, the word fear is called to be pakad. And the word uh, yare, not pakad. And the word mora or yare meant to say reverential fear. And then he says, furthermore, said the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name, and you say, wherein have we despised thy name? And then furthermore, you offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have you polluted thee? In that you say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. The word contemptible is bazaar, despised. They say, Lord himself needs despised things. So we talk to them in the standards of despised things. If the Lord God himself is despised, his table is despised, we also feed over there with despised things. But you know, dear brethren, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not worthless as these people claim. 
like the Sheikh Hamad Didad, or other things, because innocently much of the things haven't been taught for you all. Truly, with the spiritual phenomenon of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, they haven't expounded to you the will of the Lord, because they themselves are not believers in Christ. The person who they don't believe, they cannot be the disciples of that person. That's what Christ our Lord ever got taught. Indeed, if you are my disciples, then do the things what I have told you. Guard the things what I have told you. But they are not disciples. They are no way considered to be the disciples of the word of Lord God any longer. So what they are doing? They are spending much of their time in silly stupid details of life. So they are not the disciples of the word of the Lord. So they cannot teach to you the truth. They despise. They say the Lord's table is under despise. But in reality, the word of Lord God is so clear, the Lord's table is absolute holy. Even when we go back to approach the high priest early once, first he would give for his sins, then for the sins of the Israel. His right finger of that right thumb, the right toe. Why does he do so? Right ear. You know, the specifications of the word of Lord God is so true and clear in the book of law. Though they say they, call, they follow the law, they consider the law, they do not understand the purity, the symbolization, the figurative works, what we have to do today in the pulpit. They say the Lord's table is baza. And know what is that baza? That meant to say Lord's table, do not dig and give you the word of God. But you know what? In 1 Peter 1, we look in verse number 12, the angels are rubbernecking to look what exactly the word of Lord God has been taught every day in the pulpits. That meant to say what? Day by day, we need to dig and take and tell the word of Lord God to these people. Day by day, dig in the word of God. Day by day, give them the right word of God. Teach them the right mind of Christ. Day by day, day by day, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, day by day. But they claim that the Lord's table is contemptible. That meant to say, bazaar. Again, followed by over here, he says, in verse number 8, If you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? If you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now to your governor, Pasha, will he be pleased? Do you think he can have your rats on approval? He says, no. Or accept thy person, said the Lord God of hosts. And now I pray you beseech God, that he will be gracious unto you. The word besiege <coughs> is called kala, followed by the standards of paniim, faces. Kala paniim. And the word, when you come over here for kala, it meant to say, make up of all the fortification to become the disciples. You know, every time you get these words in the pictographical representation, you be careful, dear brethren, what Christ our Lord of our God has in very clear thoughts or in very clear words exemplified for us to look what exactly is the right word of God or what exactly is the right mind of Christ. He emphasized in very simple, true, clear words, you have to be the disciples of the word of God. If you are not the disciples of the word of Lord God, never you can be in the standards of besieging my Lord. So he says, Kala Pani Im God, that he will be gracious unto us. And this hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, said the Lord God of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for nothing? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for nothing. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord God of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even till to the going down of the same, my name is great. Oh, my name great among the Gentiles. The word shall be not found in the italics of the virtual. My name great among the Gentiles, that's the past, that's the future, that's the present. He is Gadol, that's it. And then in every place incense offered unto my name, a pure offering for my name, great among the heathen, second time, said the Lord God of hosts. But you have profaned it, in that you say the table of the Lord is polluted. Now the word over here, polluted, is called to be gala. And the word Gael or Gala meant to say, distorted thinking, no need of becoming disciples. That's what you say. 
You're saying no need of making disciples. That's what Gala is all about. So distorted thinking from the discipleship program. Distorted thinking from the right word of the Lord. Distorted thinking what the mind of Christ could be. So he says Gala, contemptible. And that to today, today, dear brethren, men are not able to find what are the exact demands because they think contemptible is enough. So they think polluted is enough. So from their baza, when you fail to dig in and take the word of Lord God, you end up to the standards called to be Gael, G-A-A-L. That meant to say what? Distorted thinking for the discipleship program. And today, people are in that clause of distorted thinking from discipleship program. You know, as the word of Lord God says, know your creator in the days of your youth. From where you came, how you came, what is your life, what is the purpose of your life? And in each and everything you will find that these people are not able to make up what exactly Christ our Lord our God begin with the disciples. The church age begin with the disciples. The church age has been given a great commission to go and make disciples of all the nations. If disciples are called for the first time Christians, if disciples are the men being used in the Bible 269 times, in each and everything, when even when Apostle Paul was hit to death, he went to the point and he writes after 14 years, the experience, what he had in Christ, he is surrounded by the disciples, says Acts chapter 14. Everything you look, it's disciples, disciples, disciples. But they say the Lord's table is contempt. You know why? It is not disciples, they think. It is no longer needed disciples to make in the churches they consider. He says distorted thinking in them. They are not disciples any longer. And that dear brethren, the pain of the Lord of a God before he could end up this Malachi, he teaches to us the importance. How they have rejected the word of the Lord. How they have neglected the mind of Christ. So he says, but they have profaned in that. They say the table of the Lord is polluted. And then, for the fruit thereof, his meat is contemptible. Now we say again, his food, you know, his bazaar. Dear brethren, be careful about these things. His food is contemptible is what the people are claiming, like Sheikh Ahmadida, to say Bible is devilish, but Bible is the only way. Born slaves instructions before they could leave the earth. For unbelievers, basic instructions before they could leave this earth and become the worst man of this earth. Because after they die, they end up into the lake of fire and they know very well where they're burning up. The critics who go against the word of God, who taught against my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rebellion in your mind. Anyone who goes against the word of God, being critics, they know very well where they're going to end up because they'll be burning in the lake of fire. He did not spare Judas Iscariot. He did not spare the one talented man. Neither he said to his a Tyros friend who came to be like a Zudas Iscariot way of life. Give him a chance of wearing wedding garments. No, neither he spared the five virgins. Neither he said to those people who were walking and eating and drinking with him. He said, because of iniquity depart from me. You say, Lord, in your name we did prophesize, we did miracles, we did wonders, but you haven't done the will of God the Father, which is to go and make disciples of all the nations when you grow up into grammatias. In all of these things, when you say the meat of the Lord God is polluted, it is purely by the so-called present Christendom pastor teachers in our pulpits who have failed to take serious responsibility in rightly dividing the word of truth, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, in the proper standards of dispensations with isagogics, categories and exegesis of the word of the law. You are making the meat of my Lord to be despised, contemptible. You are answerable for that at the judgment seat of Christ. As James 3.1 gives a great record to understand that if you are preaching the word of God and if you haven't done according to the will of the Lord, greater is your punishment. Greater is your judgment. And then you said also, Behold, Behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick, thus you bought an offering, should I accept this at your hand, said the Lord. You know what? 
this people they have made to give to my Lord that which is as if they have to pay. They haven't truly received my Christ. They haven't truly made up their life according to the will of the Lord. They have just made as if to pay to pay. The same thing what they're doing today, coming weekly once to the church, and some people will not come weekly once regularly to the church. Some will come yearly once. You know, how you are dealing with my Lord, you're dealing with as if you're bought some that which is sick, you're bought some that which is a torn one, you're bought to my Lord that which is lame. Do you think God the Father is happy with those kind of life? He is Lord God. He has all the right and authority. First give him that which is right and good. Even Job, when he was thinking about his sons, whether they might have grieved against the Lord, he goes on to teach them the importance. That there shall not be any blame to the Lord, so he would give sacrifice unto the Lord. You know how you are dealing with my Christ? You are dealing in the standards of Torun one. And the word Torun, do you know what, dear brethren? The Hebrew word is very important. It is called over here as Gazal, that which is plundered or seized off. And what is the word Gazal? It is nothing but to erect a structure wherewith you have failed to take your weapons and you have failed to become a disciple. That's what you're coming. Today you find men who have not erected the thinking of Christ in their mind, who have not used the weapons of warfare given by Lord God the Holy Ghost to dig and take, though the conscience has been told permanently in their life, wake up and look the will of God. Never they become the disciples of the word of God. That's the word Torah, Gazal. And followed by the second word called to be as lame, meant to say, Piseka, P-I-S-S-E-A-C-H, this word lame, what we find, it meant to say that which would limp. And the pictographical representation meant to say they open up their mouth in pressure because they have the details of life to be fed for them. So they come with that sort of wall of fortification and they're allowed to do that which is against the will of God. So that's the word Piseka. And the third one, sick, the word sick, is called as the people meant to say kala who have not and never built up a wall of fortification to become the disciples of the word of god so here we find the three categories the torn the lame the sick the torn are the people who are not the disciples of the word of god never erected a structure to take in the weapons of warfare and dig in the word the lame these are also the people who open up their mouth for the things which are been today saying that what are your prayer requests and people would say such and such, such and such. But no one is having a prayer request as Apostle Paul had in Philippians 3 which says to the superior of the knowledge in Christ to enlighten our eyes, to look into the great things of the mystery doctrine of the church age. No one has such prayer request. So the word what we find Piseka which is called to be over here lame it's very simple. It's very clear. It says that you open up your mouth for the pressure of the details of life. So today you're offering to Lord God that who is not a disciple erected, who is not having the desire to know my Christ, and you're also coming over here with the standards of Kala, which is called to say the pain. Who are this Kala? These are the men who never build up all of fortification to be disciples. As we can find in my country, India, many people coming to the service of Christ as pastor teachers, <laughs> As disciples or evangelists, never they build up their wall of fortification to know that they have to go and make disciples of Christ. So he says, you're going to get before me such men who are torn, who are lame, who are sick. Should I accept this at your hand? The word accept is rats on approval of the Lord. And then furthermore he says, <coughs> but cursed be the deceiver. <laughs> The word cursed is called to be arar. That meant to say the people who are having cunning thinking, who are not having a straightforward thinking like the word of God. We find over here two double heads. That means distorted cunning thinking. He says these are the cursed ones because he's a deceiver. Why? The word deceiver is called over here for us nakal. And the word nakal meant to say in his vigor and valor, never in his life he has become a scribe, never he has gone to make disciples to the Lord. Such is the one called to be deceiver. 
and why he says who hath in his flock a male and he voweth and sacrifice unto the lord a corrupt thing and the word voweth we read about na there as we read upon in that great word in psalms chapter 56 in verse number 12 i must pay the vast vows of the lord so he voweth unto the lord that he will become as a disciple growing up into gramity as an indeterm making disciples of all the nations but what do we find we find that he had deceived by sacrificing unto the lord a thing that which is corrupt and the word corrupt over here what we find is called to be shakat it meant to say their munching process their wall of fortification are not under the authority of christ but they are under the authority of their own lustful patterns of this old sin nature so for i am a great king that is gadol malak followed by said the lord of hosts and my name is yare among the heathen that will people will tremble but looking upon your life you are becoming like judas is career looking upon your way of thinking you have become exactly like the standards of the silly stupid details of life and that dear brother and god the father is so gracious in providing to each and every believer one more day one more life one more year and that you want to deceive the lord and people come to the altar of the lord with lame torn sick attitude and the lame torn sick attitude not in the sense like the way how hanna went to pray to the lord god to give her a son wherewith she could dedicate him but an attitude to fulfill your lusts to make the name of my lord god to be blasphemed among the gentiles dear brother and you need to wake up don't be called as a tyros before the presence of the lord in romans chapter 9 when we look this great verse which says particularly about abraham and his call It says that she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written Jacob I love and Isaac hated what shall we say then is there injustice on God's part by no means for he says to Moses I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion so that it depends not on the human will or exertion but on God who has mercy and then for the scripture says to Pharaoh for this very purpose I have raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth that's what he says over here in Malachi 1:14 my name is been great among all the earth and what a great thing we have for us to learn about this in all the earth his name shall be called great and then furthermore he writes so then he has mercy on whomsoever he will and he hardens whomsoever he wills but who are you o man to answer back to god will what is molded say to its molder why have you made me like this has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honor and the other for dishonorable uses but every believer over here which God the father has called in the church age he has called them to the praise of his glory to the sense that we shall be the great gift of the lord so what if god desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy which he has prepared before hand for glory even as whom he has called not from the jews only but also from the gentiles so dear brother and he says and indeed hosea says those who were not my people i will call my people and her who has not beloved i will call beloved and no longer he'll be remembered by the name baal but he will call the name yehova and in the very place where it was said to them you are not my people or you are not my standards of men he says now in that same very place i will call you the sons of the living god and isaiah over here he cries out he says Though the number of the sons of Israel be as a sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. That's what we were looking. For the Lord will carry out His sentence upon the earth fully and without delay, 
And as Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodoma and become like Gomorrah. What shall we say then? The Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, that is a righteousness that is by faith. But that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. But as if it were based on works, they have stumbled over the stumbling stone. And as it has been written, Behold, I am laying a, 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 zoin, a stone in stumbling and a rock of offense, and whosoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Dear brethren, your life is completely dependent upon what God the Father has designed for us to execute. Rather than making up your time in the silly stupid details of this life, wake up to the reality of the Word of God. Because time is short. We do not know when is your death. We do not know when is the rapture of the church. Time is short. Understand what is the will of the Lord. Realize what is the mind of Christ. Do not spend your time in vain glory and make up your life according to the silly stupid details of this earth. Since you are called to be as Philos. Why do you want to turn into become Hatiros? And why do you want to have your life in the details of this sin? Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Do not use the, the grace of God in vain glory, but rather carry your cross every day. To look and to examine your ways. Every time you examine your word, every time you examine your thought, every time you come back, your mouth should be opened up to make disciples of all the nations. Without making disciples, you don't have any pleasure on this earth. As people think, having to live a life that could be great enough in the standards of the lust of the flesh. But he says, no. Your life is to do the will of God the Father. And, the execute, and to execute the work of Lord God the Father. Dear brethren, think over these issues, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His praise. Because it's your life, and which way you want to go, you can decide. It's completely, purely for you. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond to my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one die out to my witnesses in well infinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two die out to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So, dear brethren, God the Father will have compassion upon whom he hath, who are pursuing the word of Lord God by faith. Because you are called to be the sons of the living God, not to be the sons of perdition. Think over these issues, carry your cross every day, follow my Christ, make up your life fit and worthy for the glory of God the Father, and try to live a life that which is pleasing to Christ, and nothing else on this earth. Which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Dear brethren, life is too short. Think over these issues. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, we are grateful and thankful for the Spirit of the Lord you have given unto us to know Thy word, to understand Thy will. And make us, O Lord, to become the sons of the living Lord God rather than the sons of perdition through this message so that we can understand and make up our life to open up our every mouth, which, to open up our every word in this mouth to be 
encouraging others to become disciples growing up into grammatias and those disciples who have done to be go and make grammatias in return making disciples for the purpose of a great commission on this life for this church which have given help us to encourage them according to the will such as diligently father and you'll find all the time in us offensive ways in the at the lord have been gracious enough to grant us one more day to learn the word and to come to the confirmation of the image of your dear beloved son according to the thinking of him so that we could attain our resurrection body so that lord we could not be ashamed but rather we could say we have fought a good fight on this earth to the praise of your glory this section father we pray that lord god the holy ghost would not and challenge us by this message only for the praise of your glory in his grace in christ much love peace gracious name we pray father may lord god the holy ghost enlighten and challenge us by this words in christ name we ask sovereign lord amen